Bibles, <clears throat> I'd like you to turn with me tonight to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. And if you'd like to stand as we open the book, Exodus, chapter number 12. Exodus 12 and verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron the, and the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. That first month is Abib. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an household. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls, Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. And your lamb shall be without a blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And then they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side post and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain till the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Note carefully. Thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all of the gods of, the, of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Amen. Father, bless your word. In thy name we pray. Amen. As I study the Bible, there's one thing that comes very clear to me, and that is that God will not tolerate another God. He said, I'm a jealous God. There'll be no other gods before me. As far as Israel was concerned, they'd been in Egypt for 400 years. God told Abraham in Genesis 15 that they'd be led captive into a land, be held slaves in a land, and then after the fourth generation, he said, I'll come and I'll redeem them, and I'll bring them out of that land. Now, God could have chosen a lot of ways to get Israel from Egypt. He could have chosen to do it in a lot of different, different ways. But what he chose to do was to, first of all, judge the gods of the Egyptians. To let them know that there's only one true God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Lord Jesus Christ said to the woman at the well in John 4, he said, You worship, you know not what, for salvation is of the Jews. And my friend, nothing's changed about that. The Bible said he came to his own, and his own received him not. Who was his own? The Jews. The Lord Jesus Christ was born of the tribe of Judah. It's very clear in the New Testament. He was not a Gentile like me. He was born as a son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His father was God and his mother was Mary. God became incarnate in flesh. And so therefore he became the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I want you to notice that the Lord came directly into the very stronghold of Egypt, into their very stomping ground, if you please, into the midst of idolatry and superstition and ignorance. And he came into this land and he gave forth a simple commandment. You will slay this lamb, take its blood, and put it over the doorpost and lentils. And when I pass through that land that night, I'll be looking for one thing and one thing only. I could not care less who's inside that house. It doesn't matter to me if it's an Egyptian or if it's an Israeli. I want to see the blood. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's as clear a teaching as anything in Scripture because it's the same thing today. 
The only thing that God's looking for in judgment is the blood. Has the blood been applied? He's not interested if you're an African or if you're an Asian or if you're a European. It doesn't matter to him if you've got a pile of money in the bank or don't have any money in the bank. The only thing he's looking for is the blood. If you're covered by the blood, you're free. You've been cleansed. Revelation 1.5 said that he hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. If you take the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ out of the church, it becomes a place of hypocrisy and morality. It becomes a place where people prag and preach about their own righteousness. My friend, my Bible tells me that my righteousness is as a filthy rag in the sight of God. That's why the blood is necessary. For it is the righteous blood of the righteous Son of God that washes my sins away. That, my friend, is what makes all the difference. When he established this, he gave them the beginning of months. He told them, this is when you start your calendar. This is where you start keeping time. This is what's important to you. Not the ninth month, not the seventh month, not the tenth month, not the twelfth month, but the first month. The first month is not January, it's not February, it's about the middle of March. It's the beginning of spring. Abib means literally when the bud is in the leaf. That's when the Bible says the time would be to start counting. When the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross at Calvary, he went to the cross at Calvary in the springtime. He there, he died to fulfill the Lamb of God, the prophecy, the one that came into Egypt that night and smote the firstborn. This was setting forth for us what would be happening thousands of years later when the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself on the cross so that we could be saved. Because he came and he smote the Egyptian gods. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Bible said he made a show of them openly. He triumphed over them in it. They might not have been able to see the gods of this world, but the Lord Jesus Christ could see them. And he said in the book of Psalms, the bulls of Bashan encompassed me. They gathered around me. They came down upon me. They lashed out at me. But at the cross, he made a show of them because he triumphed over them in his own precious blood. He and my friend, that's important to understand tonight. The life of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he lived on this earth, he lived a sinless perfect life. But you need to understand that you're not saved by the life that he lived. The life of the Lord Jesus Christ is sinless and it's perfect, but you can't be saved by that life. That life is not what saves you. What saves you is the fact that he went to the tree and there he gave himself so that you could be saved. He became the lamb of God, God's lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. It is upon his shoulders that he became the scapegoat. It's upon the shoulders of the Lord Jesus Christ that God heaped upon all the sins of mankind and then made him himself, made the Lord Jesus Christ to be sin, to become sin for me who knew no sin. Well, no greater love could God do for any of us tonight than for him to do that. The Passover lamb in the book of Exodus is a sign of God Almighty's provision for his people. He made a way for them to come out of Egypt. No other way could he do it. He had to do it by blood. And the reason he had to do it by blood is because they had to be redeemed. They were sold into Egypt. They were bought back out of Egypt. They were sold into slavery. They were bought back out of slavery. And the buying back is the redemption price paid. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, he redeemed you. And you cannot be redeemed with money. You can't be redeemed with works. You can't even be redeemed with a sinless, perfect life. You must be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so he shed his blood. Every one of us, before we were saved, were sold under sin. Sold into its consequences. Sold into its condemnation. Sold away from God. There's something that goes on that it's hard for a human being to understand. But Satan has a legitimate claim to this earth. He won it from Adam. He's the God of this world. He owns this world. He has rights to this world. And the Lord will not violate that because he's a holy God. And when he does something as it relates to salvation and redemption, he does it according to a perfect righteous plan that Satan cannot circumvent. He can't change it. He can't stop it. 
He can't do anything against it. And so when the Lamb of God came into this world, he walked into Satan's territory, upon Satan's land, against, uh, 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 subjecting himself to the laws of this earth. And in spite of all of that, he was able to overcome every bit of it and made a show of him openly. And there at the cross, in his complete and absolute obedience to the Father, he shed his perfect blood so that we could be saved. Now, folks, tonight, this is what's important. He said, when he, when he established this Lord's Supper, he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So what he is saying is that when you do it, remember what I did for you until I come. It not only looks to the past, it looks to the future. As oft as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. There are those that every time they meet, they have the Lord's Supper. The Roman Catholic Church, every time they meet, they have a Mass. And they have what's called the sacrifice of the Mass. They have something similar to what goes on here, but it's not the same because it doesn't mean the same to them. To them, they are receiving literally the body and the blood of Christ. Therefore, they're, they're, they call it the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. They're receiving salvation. But folks, if you were saved, if you're born again tonight, you only receive salvation one time. One time. One time. If you've truly been born again, then you belong to him. And if you really belong to him, he'll let you know you belong to him. And if, he, and if you can live like you used to live before you say you got saved... And he hasn't let you know you belong to him. You don't belong to him. He said, those I love, I chasten. You don't have a free ticket to do anything you please. When you're born again, you have a Lord and master that I preached about this morning. Remember that? Creator only by a spoken word. That's all it took from him to create. Save, he had to go to the cross and shed his blood. Lord and master, that's because of who he is. And the more you realize who he is, the more you'll yield to him as Lord and Master. You don't like what's happening to you? I don't like what happened to me. You don't like some of the things that's going on? Some of the things going on, I don't like. But the bottom line is that I don't turn from him. I turn to him. And I put myself down at his feet. And I say, I don't give you lip service that you're Lord. You are Lord. And I bow before him. By doing that, you are, he is, I don't like to use the word, make him Lord. <laughs> I just, I, I shy away from that. I'll get tongue, I'll twist my tongue to keep from saying it. Because you can't make him Lord. <laughs> you can't do one thing to add to his stature. He's Lord God Almighty, whether you ever knew him or not. What you do is acknowledge him as Lord. And that acknowledgement is not lip service. Not lip service. So many Christians in this town, they, they give him an hour a week if they give him that much. That's not much. Considering the fact that every breath you breathe comes from him. Every beat of your heart, he causes it to beat. He upholds all things. They're beginning to discover through DNA that something's holding everything together. And they can't figure it out. And they're finding out through DNA that what they thought was so simple under Charles Darwin when he gave his hypothesis of evolution, that it is infinitely more complicated. <coughs> Their concept of the human cell is far, far, far greater now than it was then. What does that mean? It means that there is an eternal mind that has given us what we have, that life came from God. And all I can do is look at somebody with pity if they don't know that. Life comes from God and God alone. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He laid his life down so that you could take this tonight and remember what he did for us. Bless his name. Bless his name. I'm not the Savior. You're not the Savior. No man on this earth is the Savior. The church is not the Savior. There's one Savior, one Lord. There's only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. That's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless that name tonight. The Lord's Supper, therefore, becomes to us a one of the uh, ordinances. Is a good word to use for it. 
It can be called other things, I suppose, but it's an ordinance. It's, it's, a, it's a statue. It's something that we do in the church along with baptism. We do these two things. I don't suppose you could be limited to that, but that's what we do. These are the two that we have biblical authority for. We do it because the Bible says do it. And so when we take the Lord's Supper tonight, we're taking it. And I pray that you take it. If you're born again, that's your privilege. That's your right. That's your heritage. You say, well, I'm not worthy. Well, how do you think you're going to make yourself worthy? <laughs> that kind of betrays a little bit of hypocrisy on your part, a little self-righteousness from you, doesn't it? If you think there's something you can do to make yourself worthy, then you think there's something you can do to save yourself. Well, what can I do, preacher? You can't do anything, but you can accept what has been done. Christ did it for us. Can you do that? Can you say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm not, I, I, Lord Jesus, I'm not a perfect man, I'm not a perfect woman, but Lord Jesus, I know you died for me, and I want you to cleanse me one more time. Wash me in your precious blood. Cleanse my soul. Cleanse my spirit. Cleanse my mind. Wash me from head to toe. Make me clean before you, Lord. You do it for me because I can't do it for myself. And that's what the man smote his breast, said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. They wasn't making, playing games. When he said, I'm a sinner, he talked about something. Yeah. And he said, be merciful to me. Well, what happened? What did the Lord Jesus say about that man that said that? How did he go down to his house? That's what the Bible says. I'll leave it at that. He went down to his house. What? Now, that's a legal term. No longer guilty. Can't charge him again. He's finished. Shut up, devil. You can't accuse him. He's justified. That's all you got to do tonight. Would you bow your head with me? Lord Jesus, in thy name, I come in thy name, and I plead thy blood upon my soul, upon my ministry, upon my life, upon all I am or ever hope to be. It's your grace, Lord. It's by your grace. I want no recognition. I don't want anybody to look at me and think that I have anything to do with their salvation. I don't want them to think that I am, have something to do with thee that they can't have. I want them to understand tonight, Lord, that I'm a sinner saved by grace. And by the grace of God that I'll make it to, to glory. And that by grace tonight I can come to thee and I ask you to cleanse me. Cleanse me in the precious blood of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. If you'll pray a prayer like that and mean it, his blood will cleanse you too. Amen. Amen. If anybody want to come down here in front and pray, whatever you want to do. Because the Bible does say that if you take that uh, cup unworthily, what does that mean? That's a flippant manner. That's not recognizing what you're dealing with. That's, that's disdaining it. That's that's thinking low of it. That's, that's thinking, well, there's no big deal here. There's a big deal. But like I say once again, we do not have power to make ourselves worthy, just like you can't save yourself, but he will if you simply call on his name. And that's what I just did. I called on his name. And I prayed the precious blood of Christ. precious blood of Jesus what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is that flow that makes me white as snow what nothing but the blood of Jesus Penance cannot wash away your sins. Regret cannot wash away your sins. Even feeling bad about your sins cannot wash away your sins. Even feeling sorry about it, wanting to do something to rest it in restitution and to make amends and try to straighten it up, that can't wash away your sins. What can? Nothing but the blood. You really understand that tonight, folks. That's what's so important. And what blood are we talking about? Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Son of God, folks. 
And down through the centuries, the church, the Christians, the believers in Christ have never had a problem with that. That's never been an issue. That's something they accept immediately. They know that they're not worthy, but the blood of Christ can make you worthy. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Nothing but the blood.